my name is Steve Marsh. I'm the founder and CTO of a company called Geospock. Geospock is a spatial big data technology company focused on harnessing the extreme amounts of data that's being produced from IoT, connected vehicles, maritime and smart cities. Geospatial actually has quite a long history. In 1854 <laughs> was the first real use of spatial understanding and spatial intelligence to solve public health. And uh, there was an outbreak of cholera in London and using a map and a pencil, marking where those outbreak cases were allowed them to isolate the problem and solve it very quickly. The three biggest issues I see with cities across the planet is congestion issue, pollution issues and public health issues. I don't think you could be considered a smart city unless you are using spatial technology to help you address all three of those. I think spatial data and spatial insights is the core of smart city. If you can't measure, you can't improve. And so although we have connectivity pieces that is being solved with IoT, 4G and 5G technologies, if you're unable to pull the insights out and make intelligent decisions on that in a way that optimizes that environment, you're not yet a smart city. I think Singapore is remarkable in that you already have a lot of the sensors in the environment that is needed to, to measure that environment. Uh, where we could help is, is de-siloing all those different forms of data, using our technology to produce rapid insight and open up the whole country to be an innovation platform for new citizen services, new applications, new, new businesses. And I think actually Singapore is probably the leader in that vision. Things like understanding where congestion is forming in a city. You know, it's, it's a red dot that gets bigger on the map. And what really needs to happen there is the understanding of context. Is that normal for this time of day? Day of week, weather conditions, time of year. And if you can understand that as it happens, you can then run predictive models for potential solutions. So you can test out a, a, a scenario where that problem is fixed, press a button and it gets fixed. <laughs> That should happen automatically. So up to this point, we've been in the world of human-generated big data. However, we are in a new era. It's the era of machine-generated extreme data. If we look at the projections by Gartner, by 2022, we're expected to produce 54 exabytes of data from IoT. Now that's more than we are projected to manufacture in terms of storage capacity. It's more data than we've ever produced as a species. And so in a sense, it's extreme. Now that's only a few years away. If we believe the projections by ARM, by 2035, we're going to have one trillion IoT devices on the planet, measuring and monitoring the entire world. That data needs to go somewhere. It needs to be processed in a cost-efficient manner. It needs to produce real-time spatial analytics and insights so we can not just understand how the environment works, but intervene as those situations are unfolding in real time to optimize that physical world outcome. The issue we have at the moment was the, the data technologies that we have today were designed in a, an era for human data. We have relational database technology that was designed in the 1970s that was all about optimizing uh, storage capacity on a single machine. We have big data tech that originated in the early 2000s that is all about throwing as much processor resource at the problem. The trouble with that approach is that as data increases, time to insight increases with it, and also cost of insight, which means that we're actually at a tipping point where it's too slow and too expensive to get insights with current technology. So the data we produced, most of the value is being lost. Spatial technology and spatial data process is the heart of optimizing an environment. If we take an example of an intelligent city platform, it would allow the government agencies and the people operating in that environment, whether they are um, automotive providers or logistics, or even brick and mortar retailers, to be able to understand how the city operates. We could allow a retailer to understand where their customers are. We could allow the government to make sure that pollutions are kept to a minimum. 
we can allow transport operators to understand where delays in the network are and be able to use different modes of transport to get people around. We can help people optimize their daily life without having to think about it.